All right, what's going on guys? It's your boy Siobhan here, back with a new video. And today we're gonna do a speed comparison between the recently released 2021 iPad Pro and over here we have the 2020 iPad Pro 11 inch. Both of them are 11 inch, both of them are base models. If you look at the back, you can't really tell, but this is the silver one, this is the new iPad. And over here on the right, this is the space gray model, no. No difference. The only real difference between these two models is speed. Apple claims that the M1 equipped iPad right here is 50% faster than the 2020 model. Now that could be a reason why you want to buy the new iPad, but does it really matter in everyday usage? Let's find out. All right guys, so keep this in mind throughout the video. On the right, we have the 2020 iPad 11 inch and on the left, we have the brand new 2021 iPad with that M1 chip inside. So this iPad on the right here was released in March of last year, 2020. It's the base model 11 inch. It has six gig of RAM and it's rocking that Apple A12Z Bionic chip. And that was like a beast of a chip, it still is. And on the left right here, we have the 2021 iPad, and this has Apple's M1 chip. So yeah, the CPU is an octa-core, the GPU, it has eight cores, and it has eight gigs of RAM. So this thing is insane. But let's see the speed test. We're gonna run through some daily apps, then also we're gonna do like intensive stuff. But first, we wanna start off with the boot up test. So we're gonna turn them on the same time, and let's see which one turns on first. All right, so even though this Apple logo came up first, the M1 actually, you know, unlocked first, guys. So I'm just gonna keep it like this so you guys can see like the keyboard. So the white one is the M1 iPad. This one over here is the regular 2020 iPad. Okay, so quick little housekeeping before we start. I just wanna show you guys we're both connected to the same internet connection right here. Move that on 5G. Um, we're both on the same, the latest version, and everything is ready to go. There's nothing open in the, the multitask switcher, as you guys can see. Boom. So yeah, let's go ahead and open some regular regular apps and see how this performs in a daily usage. So all right, let's go into the social media app. And first thing we're going to open is Twitter. Let's see. Hmm. The M1, a little bit more a little bit faster the m1 open at just a tad bit faster now let's try instagram m1 again but the a12 kind of like loaded everything first just a little bit just a little bit um now let's try reddit you know reddit has more um intensive stuff more articles and stuff like that let's see m1 again yeah, this M1 is definitely a little bit faster, but is it 50% speed faster though? Let's try Amazon Prime Video. Okay, the M1 definitely open a little bit faster there. All right, let's go ahead and try Twitch. All right, so I guess on your regular, regular days opening apps, it's gonna be a little bit faster on M1, which is over here on the left. Now let's go ahead and open, you know, more like games. So let's try Call of Duty real quick. The A12 is doing, it's going through. I think the A12 is gonna win this one, guys. Same internet speed, yep. The A12 won this one. Hats off to the A12. Everybody's spending that extra bread. You better save it. The A12 is here for you, baby. <laughs> now let's try PUBG. Let's see if we get the same results. So congrats to the A12. Let me see some A12 Ws in the in the comment section real quick. So all right, PUBG. I know a lot of people like PUBG. Let's who could let's see who could hop on PUBG faster. Mm. Yep. M1. Hold on. We'll have to run through the the updates and everything. Ooh, we just got, yeah. So, 
M1 did it first. All right, now let's go ahead and open some like productivity apps real quick. So let's open Photoshop on Lightroom. You know, a lot of people like to use those apps. So boom, M1 open first, even loaded everything faster than the A12. Let's try Lightroom. Hmm, interesting. A12 open Lightroom a little bit faster. Then we have Procreate. M1 loaded a little bit faster for sure. So yeah, on day-to-day -day usage, it's not much of a big difference, guys. So as you guys could probably tell, the M1 iPad does open apps a little bit faster, but the real test might come down to GPU rendering and seeing how it really holds up when you have intensive tasks on its hands. So now let's look at some benchmarks. So I have this clip in iMovie right now, right here, guys. Boom, it's a five minute video. Shot it on my A7S3, so it's 4K, 10 bit. And as you can see, it's playing smoothly on the 2020 iPad. And it's also playing smoothly on M1 without any issues, which is insane. If we were supposed to play stuff like this on other like devices, even PCs, this thing would struggle but it's playing perfectly fine. So what I'm gonna do here is export the video and we're gonna see which one is faster. So let's go ahead and export this. Hit the share button and we're gonna save it. All right, save video. Boom. And boom, M1 finished. And look at the 2020 iPad, it's doing a good job. It finished like three seconds later. Like, come on guys, come on. Like, I feel like we're at the point where the iPad is just, it's just diminishing returns at this point. Like how, how better can you get, you know what I mean? Let's see if we could find the video we just exported. Recents, boom, here's it. The five minute video we just exported and it plays perfectly fine. We're gonna run this Geek Bench score. Go into the CPU. We're gonna run a CPU benchmark real quick. Run benchmark. Okay, so the M1 just finished the CPU um, benchmark. Meanwhile, you know, the A12 is still over here kind of struggling, which is to be expected. All right, so we have the Geekbench score results right here. So for the 2020 version, we have 1117 with a single score. And look at the massive difference on M1 single score. We have 1684 and multi-score is, it's annihilation guys. 7,210 for multi-score, 4,673 for multi-score with the A12. It's still good, you know what I mean? But is it? M1 good though. Now let's go ahead and run a GPU test to see the difference with this M1 chipset. Let's go. Oh my god. No way. No way the M1 just annihilated that so much. 12,069 for the GPU score. That's crazy. Over here, 21,000. This is M1. It's built different. Like, Apple is insane. That's crazy. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. But I, was, I wasn't hyped, but now I'm hyped because these scores are crazy good. The last thing we're gonna do is a 3D benchmark right here. And we're gonna run this Wildlife Extreme 3D benchmark and see which one finished first. All right, so this basically it runs at 4K UHD for the render resolution and it uses this. It's like a stress test on the heavy loads. So this is going to really push the iPad to its limits and to see if thermal throttling kicks in and all of that. Let's see. So let's go. Three, two, one, start. So we still got a higher frame rate while it was rendering in 4K. So we were basically running around 27 FPS, 28 FPS. But with a 2020 iPad, we're running at 19 
basically 20 fps and as you can see the score the overall score right here 3234 4661 on the m1 basically what that mean is the m1 basically performs more on the heavy performs better on the heavy load and if we scroll down right here you can see the performance chart and my score versus other devices so yeah that basically concludes today's video as you can see from the results the 2020 ipad still held its own if you want to just buy an ipad for performance and you're doing 3d graphic rendering all that stuff you probably just need to buy a pc but if you do that type of stuff with the ipad then i guess you'd go with the m1 ipad but for now just opening basic apps on a daily basis the performance is nearly identical but yeah that's it for today's video if you enjoy content like this don't forget to drop a like and subscribe as always guys love peace and tweaks signing out